Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Hold your horses. Let's stop taking it to the stupid. Secret Society is with Earl Spence. If you didn't know, well, now you know. Anybody asking the question? How the hell Earl Spence disappeared from the sport of boxing after getting tranquilized, tenderized by Terrence Bud Crawford. Just gone from the sport. Can't do a rematch with Crawford. Push him back the damn fight deep. All this crap going on with Earl Spence. Something wrong with his eyeballs. Something wrong with his nose, his ears. Wrong with his testicles. Something wrong with his foot. Something wrong with his elbow. His, his dog bit the cat. I mean, all kind of shit going on, right? But then out of nowhere, you get a story about him and Derek James. And who owed Derek James two, three million? Derek James still wrapping that sock around his eyes, looking like Blink Man and shit. All these stories, right? Earl Spence can't fight. His career's over. He's on the farm. Got a new cow. Got a new horse. Right? Think he got rid of his horse Ferrari, the white horse, because it reminded him of the white Lamborghini or Ferrari he was driving when he got in the car accident. All this shit going on, right? All of a sudden, Earl Spence coming back to boxing? And Earl Spence is able to leapfrog everybody and go directly at Tim Zoom. How is that possible? The secret society is in full effect. I keep telling y'all, when it comes to these sanctioning bodies, when it comes to these key decision makers behind the scenes, they are going to do what's best for them. And what's best for them is the dollar, dollar bill, y'all. Not the Omaha, y'all. The dollar bill, y'all. Terrence Crawford ain't good for their business. For the WBO, they love him. Nobody else seems to care about Terrence Crawford. Mauricio the Noble Suleiman doesn't care about him, the WBC. IBF already showed you what they thought about his ass. They ain't let him do what Earl Spence did, did they? WBA ain't thinking about him. Y'all pay attention. We talk about money, right? There was a conversation. Uh, someone was saying Terrence Crawford, now that he became two-time undisputed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrence Crawford brings more money to the table now. I said, yo, champ, McNicholas, hold your horse and stop taking to the stupid. Terrence Crawford is two-time undisputed. It's a huge accomplishment. That, that had nothing to do with how much money he brings to the table. He's still not marketable. Nobody, I mean, a lot of people don't want to see him. I want to see him fight. I'm a boxing fan. I watch, and I watch anything. I watch, if people fight, I'm watching shit. But I watch Terrence Crawford. But it's like I've been saying in all my videos, man, people are like, ah, yeah. Screw you, hit champion. You're hating on Terrence Crawford. You're just such a buster. You're just a cockahole. Yo, McNicholas. Did this man rose to the top of the goddamn sport? That shit Terrence Crawford did was a huge deal. Everybody in the sport talking about it. Everybody gives Crawford respect. But he went too long. He went inactive again. He didn't ride the wave. And some of it's his fault, some of it's not his fault. I get it, but I'm not here to talk about who's to blame. Let's just talk about the fact that Terrence Crawford, he missed his opportunity to capitalize on the momentum he had going by clipping the golden child, Earl Spence. You always hear when the people talk about Earl Spence. Oh, he's an Olympian, he's this. He gave Mayweather the business. He, Earl's Earl, Spence, 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 Earl, Earl, Spence, Spence, Earl. Right? 
Then he went there and got being beamed. Crawford missed an opportunity. After that, Crawford should have fought Jerron Ennis. I understand Crawford wants the big money. He thought he was Mayweather. Crawford beat Earl Spence, took it to the stupid. Thought he was fucking Floyd Mayweather. My man, you, you, a Floyd Mayweather type person comes around once in a goddamn lifetime. And the way the stars line up for Floyd Mayweather and his HBO, being on HBO, De La Hoya, you know, kind of transitioning to Showtime, getting that huge deal. Stars just lined up for him, having Al Heyman in there working with him. Shit just lined up for him. You know what I'm saying? Arguing with his dad on 24-7, you know, fighting Miguel Cotto. Miguel Cotto having ups and downs in his camp, then coming back having that, doing all that, fighting Ricky Hatton. You know, Crawford hasn't dancing on the stars and shit with Mayweather. Crawford hasn't done a one one hundred of what Mayweather does. And the guys he's fought, they're not as interesting as, I would say, a Ricky Hatton, a Miguel Cotto. You know what I'm saying? Even even with uh, Robert Guerrero, he's at, he was interested. Guerrero was out here being binging people. But we knew a lot about those guys. Guerrero, his wife with cancer, his crazy ass dad, the Chicano, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, ju I just feel like in, in order for these fighters to be able to really, no kidding, pick and choose who they want to fight and make 30, 40, 100, 200 million. I mean, unless you can get out there on that Saudi circuit. And nobody's going to be able to come out here and, and, and replicate what Floyd Mayweather did. It's just, Canelo's kind of there, but you got to understand, I said this in another video, I'll say it again. You know, Canelo, he's, he's a red-headed, very fair-skinned, uh, white uh, Mexican. And he can fight his ass off. He speaks Spanish. The kid sold ice cream with his dad. When, 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 when Canelo was making noise in, in boxing, the whole goddamn Mexico went crazy because they were like, wow. He, you just look at him and you're like, Where this, is he Mexican? So he, he was marketable, but he could fight. And the whole country, man, they, they got behind him, one, because he's Mexican, but then two, it, it, it's like, who, what, it's not just your typical Mexican you see in boxing, you know what I'm saying? you like, who is this guy? And you, you know, it's, it catches your attention. But there's, outside of Floyd Mayweather Canelo, Earl Spence kind of has that about him in a way. Especially come back from that car accident and shit. If, if if I was going to put somebody up against Zoom, if I was Zoom and I was going to fight somebody, where it could be a good build up, be marketable, could be big money, and there's a sense of suspense there, yeah, I'd go with Earl Spence too. I'll be honest with you. Because the WBC, Mauricio Suleiman, you see the way. Uh, What's his name? Al Al Carcel, whatever the hell the the president. Um, what's his name? It's not Pablo Al Carcel. Whatever his name is, the WBO president. The way he loves Terence Crawford. That's how Mauricio Suleiman loves Earl Spence. He's crazy about Earl Spence. You better believe it. And that's why I think when you have Mauricio Suleiman in your corner. Shit falls into place for you. And people are sitting there trying to understand, well, how is Earl Spence returning to fight Tim Zulu? And what's going to happen because Crawford's the mandatory for the WBO? Because Suleiman got, got to make sure Zoo keeps that WBC strap and Earl Spence gets an opportunity to become a WBC champion at 154 because the secret society is in full effect and Mauricio Suleiman is definitely part of that. Sorry, Crawford. It is what it is. 
But I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna keep telling y'all, pay attention. Pay attention to this shit. This, this could be this probably was the plan all along anyway. Who knows what's going on? You think, look, Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence have been talking. They've been talking. So they both probably planned. Look at the timing of this shit. Crawford activates mandatory status for the WBO. Earl Spence coming to the fight, announcing that he wants the winner. So Crawford and Spence are on the same page. On the same page. This is their way to make sure one of them get at least a piece of hardware at 154, and then they fight each other. That's what I think. I think the secret society is in full effect, but God damn it, you know what? The more I talk about it, the more I think Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence, I think, I, I think they're sitting back having conversations and they're planning this shit out. It just doesn't make sense that goddamn Earl Spence was out there on the farm somewhere, laid up there in the shade, probably curled up one of his goddamn goats, sipping on iced tea. And he just decided one day, you know what, I'm tired of chilling out here in the shade spot. I'm gonna come on and get back in the ring and I'm gonna go, oh, who's that? Oh, 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 Crawford said he wanted to fight those, uh, Tim Zhu and the winner of Zhu from Door. Oh yeah, I guess I wanna fight him too. Come on, man. It's not a kawinky dink. Shit probably already scripted. But anyway, Secret Society is with Earl Spence. Because if Spence and Crawford aren't on the same page, I, I personally think Secret Society is with Earl Spence and watch Earl Spence get the fight over Crawford. Crawford gonna have to figure out what he does next. Maybe maybe they fight each other after, I don't know. But the bottom line is that WBO belt, if Zhu goes after, the winner of Fundora Zhu win, that WBO belt gonna become vacant if they choose to fight Spence. But hey, it's all about the money. Who we'll get that money? Y'all keep cool, I'm in the breeze.